good day students in this video lecture we will be seeing the computation complexity of a priori algorithm which is affected by various factors some of the factors are listed over here they are support threshold number of items that is the dimensionality or number of features number of transactions average transaction width generation of frequent one item sets candidate generation and support counting let us go through each one of them one by one so what is support threshold <coughs> support threshold is where is based on the support count uh, where it determines how many transactions are having a particular item set so if you say that the 50% is the support count then you are fixing the threshold for the 50% of the transactions will have a particular item set say beer diapers or beer diapers milk 50% of the transactions must have that particular item set so what is the effect of lowering or increasing this support count or support threshold that we are going to see here so how it is going to affect the computational complexity so lowering the support threshold often results in more item sets being declared as frequent this is very obvious it is like how we lower the pass percentage uh, then more number of students will pass the exam in the same way if uh, we lower the support threshold then more number of item sets will be declared as frequent this has an adverse effect on the computational complexity of algorithm because more candidate items must be generated and counted so let us see this uh, with the help of this plot so here you can see the number of uh, candidate item sets versus number of uh, sorry uh, number of size of the item set versus number of uh, candidate item sets so if you keep your support count very low which is given by this uh, dark uh, bullets then definitely the uh, number of candidate item sets examined will increase the reason is you are having a very low support when you increase the support count at least 50% you can see that initially the number of candidate item sets being examined will increase but as the size of the item set increases it will go down means uh, the number of item sets being present in the transaction will reduce because of that uh, the examining the candidate item sets will uh, reduce when you increase the support count to 50% when you have the 20% uh, it is comparatively higher with respect to the 50% but uh, if you compare this 50% with the 10% then you can easily understand the difference how the fixing of the support threshold as very low will adversely affect our computation complexity that is this plot is given with respect to the number of candidate item sets you can also take it with respect to the number of uh, frequent item sets you can also see over here the dark bulleted uh, plots with the 10% of support count how the number of frequent item sets increased will be higher over here as you bring it uh, or or as you increase it to the 50% definitely it is going very down so this clearly shows us how fixing the support threshold plays a very key role in the computational complexity of the a priori algorithm next we will uh, go with the number of items or the dimensionality as we all know as the number of items increases or number of the features increases more space will be needed to store the support count counts of the items so if number of frequent items also grows with the dimensionality of the data then computation and input output cost will increase because of the larger number of candidate item sets generated by the algorithm this is obvious uh, inference which one can get uh, with the number of item sets or not item sets number of items increasing 
next we will go with the number of transactions since a priori algorithm makes repeated passes over the data set its runtime increases with the large number of transactions suppose say that if you are having the 100 transaction then the <coughs> passes made over that data set compared to the data set containing thousands or millions of transaction is very different because for the different calculations uh, algorithm has to do the passes over this number of transactions so as the number of transaction increases definitely the complexity is also going to increase then we will go with the average uh, transaction width uh, as we have seen in the earlier lectures uh, transaction width means number of items present in the transaction so for the dense data sets the average transaction width can be uh, very large mm, since the number of items involved in it may be more so this definitely affects the complexity of a priori algorithm in two ways one maximum size of frequent item sets tends to increase as the average transaction width increases second as a sec uh, transaction width increases more item sets are contained in the transaction why it happens because the very basic definition of transaction width says us that the number of items present in a particular transaction so as the transaction width is going to increase definitely the item set, set contained in that will increase which in turn will contribute to the frequent item sets so two things are there one thing is the maximum size of the frequent item sets which tends to increase with the average transaction width second thing is more item sets are contained in the transaction and this will increase the uh, computations made so this we can uh, understand with the help of the plot also again they have done one thing with the number of candidate item sets another thing with the number of uh, frequent item sets so you can see here uh, the line which is having a higher uh, transaction width is going to do more number of examination of the candidate item sets as you know more frequent item sets or more candidate item sets will be generated which is having the less transaction width like 5 and 10 it will be doing initially it will spike over here this line plot will spike over here but as the size of the item set increases it is almost 0 or between 0 to 1 but when the transaction width is 15 uh, it is higher there is uh, peaks and valleys once it will peak over here then it will come to valley again it will spike and go to peak and then it will reduce similarly it will be the case with the frequent item sets also next generation of frequent one item sets so this is also very much relevant for each transaction we need to update the support count for every item present in the transaction assuming that w is the average transaction width this operation requires a big o of n w time where n is the total number of transactions next we will see the candidate generation to generate the candidate k item sets a pairs of frequent k minus 1 item sets are have to be merged to determine whether they have at least k minus 2 items in the common so sorry here there is a typo mistake it is it must be k minus 2 items in common then each merging operation requires at most k minus 2 equality comparisons we are going to compare whether k minus 2 items are common so in best case scenario what may happen every merging step produces a viable candidate k item set in worst case scenario algorithm must merge every pair of frequent k minus 1 item sets found in the previous iteration accordingly the cost of merging frequent item sets will come that is comparing the k minus 2 equality and merging them 
last one is the uh, support counter support counting as we already know once we have the candidates ready we should uh, see what is the support count of that based on that uh, pruning will be done so each transaction of length t produces tck item sets of uh, size k this is also going to affect our uh, computational complexity so the cost for support counting will be big o of capital n into summation of k wck alpha k where w is the maximum transaction width and alpha k is the cost of updating the support count so support count definitely has the effect on the computational complexity so this uh, brings us to the end of the video lecture on computational complexity of a priori algorithm which is affected by the different factors thank you